Hello everybody, how is it going? So, today I have one and a half games playing some law. Uh, I know this video is kind of quick, don't worry. I'll have a, a longer law video soon. I know someone asked me <laughs> just for another one. Uh, next one will probably just be... Uh, I think tomorrow I might do some more of the uh, preliminary tournaments, but day after probably be more law. But uh, the first game is against a Sakazuki. Um, yup, hard matchup, but honestly, our hand kind of works. I find like just playing a one or two cost turn one, like they usually don't out it. They probably, you probably just leave it because, you know, Sakazuki, or not Sakazuki, sorry, Luchi exists. So, I mean, normally they'll just let you rock, but absolutely not. <laughs> he he hound blazes me turn one, which I mean, honestly, I'm kind of okay with that because I have the Dogra and I do, basically I can set up my whole board and I think it was forward on. So this turn, I'll either just play Brook and swing nine or I'll just swing nine. Uh, seeing if he'll spend another resource on outing the brook. We'll see But uh getting off topic um, I know my last video was uh, not the norm also printer just made a noise Hopefully you guys didn't hear that, but yeah, uh, I was just a little bit of fun. My friend was over and uh, I Was like I, I haven't recorded a video today <laughs> Either I wasn't I really wasn't trying to be like I'm gonna record this video. Just <laughs> sit there So now nah, I was like, you know Try to commentate with me. He, he knows a little bit about One Piece. He's played a little bit, but it was fun. I, we had fun making it, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, we Maybe we'll have him back next time. We, we got a couple ideas. I know someone suggested trying to teach him on the sim. We could do that. I might, uh, I was thinking of making a tier list with him, just purely based off what the character, characters looked like and <laughs> how, he, how good he thought the deck was. So, I mean, we'll see. I got some ideas, but back to the game. He double brand news, my brook sticks, I'm happy about it. So this turn, uh, we're really going to pray that our Bonnie finds us a blocker law. If not, our turn is a little bit subpar, because we're pretty much just going to be bouncing into a Zoro to preserve our Bonnie. But we'll see how it goes. I decided not to swing there, just because I didn't want to get Ice Aged. Um, I think, I forget exactly what costs Ice Age hits when you trigger it off of life, but... Regardless, I knew it would screw up like the exact amount of Dawn I needed, so I figured I'll just get hit with the trigger after I use my leader. And we do find a blocker law, which is super good. So we're, you know, going to leader effect into Law and Zoro and just attack for five twice. His board can't really fight back unless he like Hound Blazes and boosts up brand new, so I'm kind of chill with playing the Zoro. And we'll pass it over. He is on seven Dawn. He'll probably be able to out. At least my Zoro, but probably the Law as well. We'll see. Uh, he cycles a Hina. And uh, he might think for a little bit here. I did speed up the second game because my opponent was thinking a lot. He plays a Borsalino and doesn't reduce my Law. Which is, yeah, that was definitely a misplay. I'm just going to free block. And he DCs. <laughs> Foolproof way to beat Sakazuki. So yeah, that was kind of that was kind of the half game, but I quickly hopped on to record, you know, a game or two on Law, and that was my first one, and I thought it was kind of funny. It's like, yeah, yeah, it, it happens, but right, there we go. <laughs> this is how we beat Sakazuki. And next up is Rebecca, which um I think is easier than playing into Sakazuki, just because you can take those first couple of turns and just attack really big, and you're not really in any danger of dying, so... I personally think this match, is, match up is a little bit easier. Also depends if they're running like Luchi and stuff like that, but yeah, obviously, you know, they have basically free answers to your one drops, but just don't play your one drops until you make your board and then they can get picked off, but they'll probably want to prioritize your five costs. So a lot of the time they stick around, but turn one, he just leaders, turn two, he plays a Rebecca and then plays down the one-legged soldier. Which is pretty good. I'm kind of. I was kind of surprised he played it down, but it, it makes some sense because if I play a low cost, he can reduce it, and then Kuros will just pop it. But we're not doing that. We're just swinging for nine. And whenever the turn comes around that I either want to like partially get some characters down, or I'm trying to just build the full board, uh, we'll just Robin the soldier first. So he doesn't have that kind of free way of just outing whatever I played. And he takes the nine K hit. <laughs> Obviously, I mean. Dropping three cards in that spot seems pretty bad, but we'll pass it over to him. He'll drop down a Colosseum. Even with this sped up, I do think <laughs> there are going to be a couple pauses. We'll see. Um, 
Right now, looking at my hand, I don't have very many green cards, nor a way to get to any green cards. So that is always a problem. But we have the Nami, so we could find like a Zoro or a Luffy that'll synergize with the Restand Law. So we at least have, you know, that turn kind of solved. But outside of that, not really. He does swing five with the uh, Rebecca Searcher. Which I don't know if attacking me at all is correct. I don't think I'm playing Sanji in this list either, so I kind of would. I'd probably just have to wait it out until I found anything at all. But I top deck a Rush Luffy, and looking at the board state, I'm like, honestly, I could play this Luffy, and if he wants to spend like two cards outing it, I think it's okay. So I just swing five, and then I'm gonna Robin, and then probably just play a Luffy. Uh, he can 7 Luffy next turn, but he doesn't have the ability to restand on it, so I wasn't really worried about that. So yeah, we'll play the Robin, pop the Soldier, and we'll play Rush Luffy and attack for 6. He might defend this, he might just take it. I think he ends up defending it, which I mean, it, it's fair. Rebecca does kind of have the card economy to not eat these uh, 5 and 6k hits early on. But getting 2ks is always good, because I feel like Rebecca always struggles on having a lot of 2ks. So, we'll take that, we'll take that. I think he had six cards in Graveyard, or Trash. I think I checked during this turn, because I was like, <laughs> am I going to just get obliterated next turn? But, nope, he leaders effect, so we know he's not going to 7-drop Luffy. He picks up another one-legged soldier. And, uh, honestly, now this turn is kind of awkward for him. He plays the Orlumbus, and I think he was looking at his Dawn. He's like, alright, I'm on 7 Dawn. I can play Orlumbus, reduce Luffy, and then play Kiros, but... Obviously, he spent one for leader ability, so he couldn't do that. And I think that's what happened this turn, because, uh... Yeah, that had to have been the play, right? I mean, play, I mean, getting down our Lumbus is good regardless, I guess, but... I think that was the original plan. And uh, now is definitely the turn where we get up a bit of our board. We're gonna play Nami, find a Brook. Our hand is a ton of 2k counters, and I think it stays like that. See, so yeah, it's pretty much... I was just counting how many Dawn... I could use for attacks and stuff. So we'll go 7 with Luffy. Obviously he has no blockers, so we're not really going to worry about swinging 8 or anything. And he does counter out of this. Now I'm like, alright, he spent 2 counters. I kind of want to swing a 5 before I restand or like swing big with leader. So we'll swing 5 with Robin after using the Machino. He'll take. So I still have 5 Dawn. I was like, I could swing 7, but I'm like, let me just swing with my characters first. Again, because I think uh, Trino Bastardo does pop like a 6 cost or less. It's kind of crazy. So <laughs> I was like, let's just swing with characters before they get removed. He eats the second 7 from Luffy. And I think he eats this 7 as well. So I've, this turn has kind of put myself in a really good spot. Because I've built up a bit more of the board. Well, I, I've built the whole board. It's not super strong right now. It's just two 6Ks and a bunch of 1-drops. But that's kind of fine for now. I imagine the Rush Luffy will definitely get outed, but if the Restand Law sticks around, we still have a ton of pressure, honestly. And uh, if he just 7 Luffy's this turn, we can definitely defend because our hand is 6 2Ks, so yeah. And we definitely would do that, just to keep up the aggression. But I imagine he will Orlumbus Kiro something, because I think that's what he planned to do last turn, but it didn't work out. He also could Luffy. I think Luffy's pretty bad in this spot, and I think he acknowledged that because I had the one drop blocker. So he'd want to out that first and then, you know, seven drop and try to swing into my characters. But yep. Orlumbus reduces the Luffy, then plays Rebecca, grabs back a Sabo, and cheats out a Kuros. Getting rid of the Luffy. Pretty good. And he still has five Dawn. I kind of figured he was just going to get down a. Uh, the Sabo that he picked up, but does decide to 3,000 worlds the Restand Law, which is pretty good, but also, like, I can answer the Rebecca with this Robin on my board, and I, I thought about it for a bit here. I'm like, my turn is going to be awkward next turn regardless. Let me at least, like, I feel, I feel like popping the Rebecca is pretty productive and just forces him to, again, put him on have more counter. We pick we pick up a Dadon off our top deck. We play Dadon find a Nami, play the Nami, find a Zoro. So that could, again, potentially help us close out the game. We're going to play Makino, take back Robin. Can't cheat into anything. Just hard play the Robin, boost up Nami. Sadly, we can only swing for 6-7, but, I mean, it's still asking for a bunch of 2Ks. 
so it's all good the goal is to hopefully get him down to zero so that we can just you know start swinging really big play make him play a blocker every turn basically so counters out of the six we'll go seven and I know he has another 2k in the soldier so if he wants to get out of this he can so unless he already used the soldier but he uses a Barto to kind of there gets out of both of them so that, that's good for him still holding on to that one life if he can clear a lot of my board this turn you know honestly my bodies aren't <laughs> very threatening at all uh the Machina is probably I guess the scariest thing on my board but that can very easily just be swung into with Kyrus or Orlumbus. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I've played enough of this matchup where, yeah, it's like annoying that you have to play so differently, but I feel like you have a, a, a strategy that should work as long as like your hand is decent and uh, you don't get like annihilated on triggers and stuff like that. Like it's not, you're, gonna, not, you're not gonna win this matchup 100% of the time, but it's a pretty good strategy into it. And uh, it just doesn't work too well in the Sakazuki, just because they're able to be, you know, still aggressive alongside just having a lot of control. So, yeah, that's just how I feel. Also, Rebecca just like, they kind of just out one card a turn, rather, maybe like one or two, but they had to spend two cards out too, unlike Sakazuki. So, you're kind of always trading even with Rebecca and Sakazuki, they're usually trading up. But he swings six at the Machino, so putting some respect on that Machino, I obviously am just going to let it go. I'm not going to drop four 2Ks for it. Um, he plays a Rebecca, finds a Kiros, and he found a Luffy off his leader. So we know two cards in hand are not counter, so we're looking good. We're looking good. If he plays Luffy, he outs, like, all of my cards but, like, one of the one drops. So that could definitely be a play. But then I, then he kind of puts him on, like, have enough counter for me to just, like, not be able to split between the one drop and that. And even then, you'd have to, like, kill me next turn. So, yeah, it's a bit of an awkward spot. But he plays Kuros, pops something. <laughs> what he pop? Uh, oh, the Dodon after he reduced it and then swung into the Nami. And then I think <laughs> he messed up a bit here. Uh, yeah, Rebecca can't swing yet. Um, maybe he thought he could swing active characters. Not quite, not quite. Only Luffy can do that. Unless you play, like, the one-drop 2k. Then you can do it. But, <laughs> I was, like, <laughs> just hovering over the cards. Like, it's not what Coliseum does, man. It's not what Coliseum does. He's gonna go one dawn on the Orlumbus. I take, just in hopes I find a green card. We don't find a green card. But it's all good. I thought about playing out some of the board, but I'm, like, let me decide after I attack for 7. Because if he takes this 7k, I'm just putting the rest of my Dawn on a 1-drop and hoping for the best. And he takes. So we're just going to 8 Dawn on Robin. Get him. And we do end up winning. He had, what, 3k total counter? So yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> we take those uh, again uh, tomorrow. I'll have probably you know tournament gameplay up. Then day after, more law. I'll try to get a bunch of games. But I almost I almost forgot to upload today, so I had to had to get this done. Alright. But uh, anyway, so thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.